Hello! In this tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how you can use iForge Ahead software to provide a way that your clients can pay you online using their credit or debit card. You will do this by sending them an invoice from the iForge Ahead system, as many of you are probably doing, and you'll send that invoice to them by email. So to begin with, I'd like to show you the end product of what we're working towards accomplishing today. So for just a moment, I'd like to imagine that I am one of your customers and you have just sent me an invoice from iForge Ahead to my email. So now I'm going to take a look at that email message. And this is the email I received from you. It says, please see the attached invoice for Farrier Services. And here is the attachment that I can click on to open and view the details of the invoice. The message further says, you can pay now using this link. And this is the part we're working on today to give them a payment method in this invoice that's coming out of iForge Ahead. The payment processing is not actually happening within iForge Ahead at all. We're just giving you a method. So I'm the customer and I'm going to click that link and it will open up my internet web browser to this page. And this would have your company name here and then it shows what they're purchasing and I've got Farrier Services for this demo but I'll show you how to change that description if you want to when you set this up. And then the customer is just going to click in price per item and enter the amount that they want to pay you. Once they've done that, they'll click continue. And you'll notice that in this example, we're using PayPal as our credit card processor. We'll discuss that uh, a little bit more down the road. But um, the next page, after they've selected, entered their amount, they can log into their PayPal account if they have one, but they are not required to have a PayPal account at all. So if they don't, they can just come down at the bottom and click pay with debit or credit card. And now they're checking out as a guest without a PayPal account and that's fine. So this is just a standard form where they'll fill in their credit card number, all the additional details, their billing address, etc. Once they've filled all that out, they'll click the pay now button. At that point, uh, the screen will ask them to confirm the payment and they'll click the confirm button. As soon as the payment is approved, uh, you will get an email automatically that will inform you that this particular customer has paid you this amount of money and the customer will get an email as well and that is a copy of their receipt and their confirmation of their payment. So let's look at how to make this happen so that your invoice is coming from iForge Ahead will have such a link. In order to do this, it's just a one-time process which really doesn't have many steps at all to set this up and have it be working going forward. But we do need to describe a little bit about what you'll need in advance. Like I said, um, none of the payment processing is happening inside iForge Ahead at all. So you will need what's called a merchant account with a credit card processor if you don't already have one. And a merchant account, a merchant is just what the credit card companies use to say a merchant is someone who can accept payments by credit cards. Now, um, there are a number of credit card processors and not all of them are the same. They will have different rates that they'll charge you a small percentage of the amount of money you're receiving but most of the rates are pretty competitive and within a similar range now. There's also a difference in the features that they provide and that's what will affect uh, this process we're working on today. When thinking about a credit card processor you, for this um, feature, you will need to select one that allows you to create links that you can send to your clients by email. In addition, these links must allow a variable payment amount that the client can enter at the time of payment. 
So when I just demonstrated as if I was your customer, remember that I was able to type in an amount that I wanted to pay you. Not all processors allow you to do this. So we looked at two of the most popular processors currently and those are PayPal and Square. These are the most commonly used right now um, and the results are that PayPal does allow the variable pricing which is why we're using it in this demonstration and Square does not allow variable pricing at this time. This is as of July of 2017. If you are already signed up with a credit card processor other than these two. Uh, if you just would like to contact us we will and let us know what processor you're using, we will help you do some research to see if they um, allow this feature and if so, how you can get the link that you'll need for your emails. So if you are already signed up with Square um, and want this feature, I'd recommend that you open a merchant account with PayPal. You don't have to discontinue your Square account. You can have more than one if you want, but it is fairly easy to set up um, your merchant account in PayPal as well, and then you'll be able to follow along and use this feature right away. If you have a PayPal account that you have not used for accepting credit cards but you've had one that you might use for purchasing items on the internet or for moving money between family and friends but you have not been accepting credit cards through it then you'll just have to log into that existing PayPal account and sign up for the additional merchant services and um, that is a fairly quick and easy thing to do. So for the rest of this tutorial, we're going to explain how to get this link from PayPal and put it into iForge Ahead. So at this time, I'm going to go over to PayPal and we'll log in and you would log into your PayPal account with your login information. And once you're logged in, you'll be on the summary or home page of your PayPal account. And at this time, you'll want to go to the gear symbol and click that and then go to profile and settings. Under my profile on the left, you'll go down to my selling tools. Click that. And then you'll have some options and the very first one under selling online is PayPal buttons and that's what we're going to use so click update and for these purposes a button and a link are the same thing so we're going to use those terms um, interchangeably and what we're doing here is creating a button or a link that you can send to your customers so they can pay you. You'll be on a page called my saved buttons if you've never done this before this will, area will be empty. So um, in either event, we'll go to create new button. And now we're just going to fill out a form specifying the details of this button or link. I'm going to scroll down to step one. And under the button type, you'll want to change it from shopping cart to buy now. And you'll notice as you make changes, this button changes in this window. Now your item name is that description that when I was pretending to be your customer and in that case it said Farrier Services but I said you could change it. Now whatever you put in here is going to be the same every time they come in to pay. Uh, it's not something that's so specific for each invoice. So let's say for example we'll make it a little different. We'll do Puff Care Services. And you can put your name of your business in this field as well, but you don't need to. If you remember, your business name will also appear above the description. After that, you'll leave the item ID blank. You do not need that. And be sure to leave the price field blank. That is what makes it a variable price item that allows them to type in how much they want to pay you. 
The currency is what currency you're going to be paid in. If you're outside the United States, you'll want to change that to your currency. Now let's scroll down a little bit. And under Customize button, we're going to click Customize Text or Appearance. And scrolling down here, we're going to just change the button text from Buy Now so that it says Pay Now. Instead of Buy, we'll ask for Pay. And keep scrolling, and we can skip the shipping, the tax, and the account IDs. Just leave those set. You don't need to do anything in Step 2, but there are a couple of options I'm going to show you in Step 3. These are all optional. Um, the first thing is, do you want to let your customer change quantities? The, we're not really dealing with quantities, so just leave that as no. Now the next one is, can your customer add special instructions in a message to you? If, if yes, then when they enter, add, enter the information for their payment, there will also be a box where they can send you a message and they can type questions or comments in there. Um, I recommend, probably in most cases, you'll want to set this to no um, because those comments from your customer would come to you in an email about the payment. And unless you're going to be real um, conscientious to read that entire email and not just look at who paid you how much, but see if they sent any comments, um, you could probably just leave this as no and have them communicate with you in other ways for their other needs. Uh, whether you need their shipping address uh, or not is optional. Now, these next fields allow you to decide what website the customer should go to after they've finished processing their payment. The first one is where they would go if their payment did not go through or they canceled the process. And the second would be what website they will go to when they successfully process the payment. And these are optional. You can leave them blank, but I just bring it to your attention in case you do have a website for your business. Um, you might want to put your website in both of these boxes, and that's where they would be um, directed to after they finish the process. Finally, under Advanced Variables, you will not need this at all, so just skip that section, and then click Create button. Now we're almost finished. Now this is a lot of information from PayPal about how to use what you've just created. I'm going to scroll down and this is the information that is creating this button. And it creates how the button looks as well as what happens when they click it. This would be used if you wanted to put something like this on a website, for example. For our purposes, we're going to skip the website tab and click on email. And now we have the link that we've been looking for. Just click Select Code. Once everything is selected, make sure it's all characters are selected. Then copy that with your copy command. And now we're done in PayPal. So at this time, you'll go into iForge Ahead. And in iForge Ahead, you'll want to be on the full screen side. Go to Settings and then All Settings. You'll scroll down and go to Settings for Invoices. And then scroll down on this page until you get the section called Emailing Invoices. This is where you set up the text for the emails that carry your invoices to your customers. So in the Email Message text box, you're going to insert this link. And you can do that wherever you'd like, and you can put whatever you'd like to introduce that. I'll just give you an example here. I'll take my current message and kind of put some space in between there. And then I'll type, uh, let's see, you may pay now using this link. And then I'll put a space and paste what we've copied that we got from PayPal. And that's all there is to it. Now, you want to be careful, even though this link doesn't make much sense, you may want to make sure that you don't get any extra characters or spaces in here. It has to be just like this in order to work. 
And again, this has to be your own custom link. If you copy this exact one that I'm using right here and put that in your invoices, it will work for your customers, but instead of you receiving their payments, the payments would come to iForge Ahead. So just make sure that this is your unique link. Once you have the message the way you want it, click Save, and you're all done. From now on, every time you email an invoice, that link will be included. So you will just go from there about your normal processes. When you've finished an invoice and you want to send it, I'll go to one here. You'll do print email. And then say you want to email this invoice. The form comes up. And then here is your message with your link included in it. You can still type uh, custom information in here for this customer if you need to. Again, just be careful not to change anything in the link. The last thing I'll point out is that if you'd like to test this whole process before you ever send it to one of your customers, you can get all the way to this screen for any of your invoices and just take out the address for your customer, type your own personal email address in here and click send and then it will come to you and you can test the link and make sure that it's working just as you expect it. That's all for this tutorial. Thanks very much.